FBI, we had a TAC team. They all meandered over there and uh, found found that that tip to be true. And was this home a relative's home? Did, did he know where he was? That, that's unknown to me. Uh, maybe one of these guys behind me can speak to the actual uh, information on, on on where how how he was actually captured. Sheriff, what's your message to the family members, the surviving family members of those people who were killed in this attack? Well, that they, they can rest easy now. Um, because he is behind bars and he will live out his life behind bars for killing those five. Sure, guys, we have, uh, we have, hey, guys, we have time for questions afterwards, Sheriff. Uh, if, if, uh, ASAC, the ASAC. Uh, yes, this is the ASAC. Uh, hey, good evening. Thank you, Sheriff Capers. Uh, my name is Jimmy Paul. I'm an assistant special agent charged with the FBI Houston Division. Uh, thanks for uh, having me. So just wanted to say first and foremost, the, the victims and their families are in the forefront of our minds. And we're extremely delighted that the suspect was captured. The tip for the suspect's location came in through the FBI's tip line. And we just wanna thank the person who had the courage and bravery to call in the suspect's location. Special Agent Paul on Kent William Fox News. Uh, do, do you know if this individual will be facing federal charges? Uh, currently, it's an ongoing investigation, and uh, he's being charged by the San Jacinto County Sheriff's what Office. Is the connection to the person who's harboring him? Uh, sir, it's an ongoing investigation. I can't comment on did that at this point. Any, did he give any indication why he did this? What was his demeanor when he was apprehended? Was he agitated? Was he tired? Hey, guys, was we're going to we're gonna let him get through his statement in the U.S. Marshals, and afterwards, we will take questions. Is that cool? Okay, thank you. I just wanted to thank uh, the person who had the courage to call in the tip, and also I'd like to thank the many FBI personnel and local law enforcement agencies who worked nonstop to bring this uh, person to justice, uh, to bring a sense of uh, justice to the victims, and also a sense of security to the community of the San Jacinto uh, County community. Um, I mean, this is basically what we do. You know, we show up, we bring the adequate resources, and then we don't we don't let up. We always said. It's not a matter of if, but a matter of when the suspects can be caught. And we're extremely glad that today was the when. Um, at this time, I'd like to turn it over to the U.S. Marshal Service representative. Good evening. My name is Joe Ruiz de Chavez. I'm a supervisory deputy U.S. Marshal. I oversee the Gulf Coast Violent Offenders and Fugitive Task Force here in Houston, Texas. Uh, first, I want to say that this was an atrocious crime that devastated this community and this country. We received a, a call for request from Sheriff Capers and uh, we brought expertise and fugitive investigations and personnel to assist in this investigation. The Marshal Service is the oldest federal law enforcement agency and we have an expertise in hunting fugitives. This is a very sad time for the, the victims and I hope that this will bring them some comfort um, and they could grieve. Thank you. We'll open up for questions now. Can, we know can you tell us if Ortopeza had any days? help from anybody? Can you tell us if Ortopeza had help from family members or any other friends in the area to help him hide for the last four days? I can say that we've contacted many families, associates, not only here in the Houston area, but across the country. He's had help over the last four days? I can't comment on that. And did he ever reach out to any family members after the shooting incident on Friday night? I can't comment on that. We know how he's detained at the scene. The female detained at the scene. Who was that? Uh, again, this, this is an ongoing investigation and we can't disclose that. Sheriff Cabot, you had mentioned previously that there were multiple occasions you weren't exactly sure how many of the police being called to that property for a firearm being discharged. Then we learned that La was removed from the country four times. And then in 2022, a protective order that was filed by his wife for domestic abuse. At any point, did that prompt further investigation from your office? Yes, sir. We, we actually filed charges on him in 2022. Uh, and it, to, to the best of my knowledge, uh, they, uh, the, we got a warrant for him. And uh, the, the constable went to serve him in another county because he, he left here and uh, never could make contact with the subject um, and uh, then a few days later 
the victim went to the district attorney's office in our county and filed a non-prosecution statement. Sorry, sorry to belabor this point, but the, the address where this arrest took place have court documents that show it traces back to one of, an aunt of one of this, I believe. Um, is, is that still the case, that this would be a home of a family member? Can anybody confirm that? I can't. Uh, I mean, it's, it, it's really, it's, it's still ongoing, uh, the investigation part. I wasn't part of the arrest team. Do we have any idea how he got from the place where the shooting happened to cut? Like, did he use a vehicle? Did he walk? Do you guys have any idea what the time was? Once again, not, not that I know of. I, I have you no knowledge of multiple agencies. Was um, DHS also involved? Was Vortac the agency who actually went in and made the apprehension? Uh, they were part of that team, I do believe. Yes, ma'am. And now with the, the wife, the surviving wife um, that's still living at that home, she is currently an ICE fugitive. Is anything happening with her? Is she being investigated? Are there follow-ups happening with her? I've understood from deputies that she has been cooperating. And to my knowledge, uh, she is still there because they, the officers are still there. I have no direct knowledge because this, this, is, this has all happened within the last couple of hours. Sure. But she is still there. Sure. Do you guys believe, we know that. Do you guys believe that large reward that was put out, is that what uh, you know, made that person call in this tip? And will that money be going to the person who called in that tip? Uh, the money will be going to the, the person that called in the tip through the proper channels. Uh, yes, ma'am. I, I don't. I'm not. I'm thinking it's still eighty thousand. Um, sure, Capers. He's. Uh, we know that he's been in this country since 2016 illegally, meaning our peso. The question is, and he had an AR-15 rifle that he was shooting the night of this incident. Uh, have you able been been able to connect the dots as to how an illegal alien was able to purchase or to? Uh, get that uh, AR-15 weapon? Well, I could just speak to conjecture. Um, buy it from somebody else uh, on the street. Are you conducting an investigation to try to connect those dots? Yes, sir, we are. That That is an ongoing investigation as well. Okay. When did you learn about the, the, that the suspect was at this address and when did you actually go in? What was the time, the specific time? For tonight's arrest? Well, yeah, when did you first learn that he was there and then when did you actually go in? We, we would probably need to defer that to the, the uh, uh, FBI or the U.S. Marshals. We received the tip at 5.15 p.m. Sorry about that. We received the tip at 5.15 p.m. and the arrest was made at 6.30 p.m. Can any of the participating agencies discuss how surprised were you that you ended up finding what a pays 15 miles away or less from where this crime was committed? I can't really speak on that. I can just tell you that we're just extremely happy that the, uh, the citizen had the courage and the bravery to call in that tip. Had you guys searched that area before you got the tip or anything to make sure that it wasn't that area? I'm not sure if it was searched before, but we, we uh, immediately dispatched uh, the team out there as soon as we got the tip. We're going to take three more questions. Uh, as far as we know, this is our one-time random tip, but we've uh, contacted multiple houses and families throughout the, the area. What does contact mean? Have you gone in? Did you search these homes? Right. We have, laundry piles and other families? We've, done, no, well? we've done knock and talks uh, with, with multiple homes throughout the area, and we've gotten consent from the homeowners to go in and take a look. So we've done done those kind of uh, actions. Yeah. Two more anyone, questions. Was there anyone, anyone else in custody or questioning? Sheriff, is anyone else in custody or in questioning tonight? Oh, I'm sorry, Sheriff. No, ma'am, nobody else is in custody tonight. And I'm assuming that they are still at the house questioning the, the people that were at the house where the suspect was arrested. Sure. Oh, did you guys find anyone else, any other injuries while the suspect was on the run? Was anyone hurt, you know, in his quest to kind of evade law enforcement? As far as we know, we do not know anybody else that was injured. Did he make any comments? What was his demeanor when he was placed under arrest? Did he seem like he was okay? Yes, sir. Just uh, uh, formal, any formal criminal charges filed? Do you, you know what those are yet? Murder. Five counts of murder. Five counts of murder. Five million dollar bond. Not capital murder? 
five million? No, sir. Thank not, you very not much. Not at this time. There is a video in social media, is correct person, Francisco Lopez. Say it one more time. There is a video in social media. Is the correct video? I haven't I haven't had time to, to visit social media. Thank you very much everyone. I'm gonna clarify. Thank you very much everyone. Thank you guys very much. Guys, I'm gonna clarify some of the spellings and, and answer some of the roundup questions here. I know that there are questions very quickly uh, about the uh, speakers that just uh, were up here. Again, San Jacinto County Sheriff Greg Capers, FBI Assistant Special Agent in Charge, Jimmy Paul, P-A-U-L, as well as Supervisory Deputy U.S. Marshal Joe Ruiz de Chavez, R-U-I-Z space D-E space C.